Thank you for joining. In this video, let's set up DNS Watch Go to protect your endpoint devices. We'll first download the client, then install the client, and lastly set up a content policy. First, let's go to watchguard.com and log into our portal account. Then from the support center, we're going to go to my watchguard and then manage DNS Watch. And here's the DNS Watch homepage. From here, we'll then go to deploy DNS Watch Go clients. And here you can see multiple pieces of information, like the release notes, so you can make sure you're up to date with everything, the installer, as well as our API token. Now I'm going to go ahead and download the installer. While that downloads, note this API token. This is how the client will know which account it belongs to. If you have multiple accounts, make sure you note which token goes to which account. I'm going to copy this to my clipboard. And now that the download is completed, I'll run the install. I'll go ahead and go through the installer by hitting Next. Accept License Agreement. Next. And here, I need to put in that API token. I have it copied to my clipboard, so I can just paste it, like so. Then hit Next. And finish the install. You do need to have admin privileges. Now the install has been completed, and I can hit Finish. If I go down to my taskbar, we can actually see right here, host is protected by DNS Watch Go. And from here, I have multiple options like showing the diagnostics, log file location, and all that. But I now know that I am protected by DNS Watch Go. This is providing us protection from malicious domains, but we can actually take this a step further. We can go to configure, then content filtering policies, or simply click it here on the left because I'm already on that page. And then here we can see where we configure our content filtering policies. We have our default policy here and our client policy here. Now one thing to note is the client policy actually changed on August 20th of 2020. So if you remember this looking different, that's likely why. Before I get into the client policies though, let's actually talk about what these policies are. You can see I have a variety of them and I can modify them from here. And we'll start with the training policy and click edit policy. Then from here, other than giving it a name, go to categories and now choose which we want to allow or not allow for those clients. For example, the security group. If we expand this, we can actually see a little bit more details on what this is also providing us for. And there are plenty others that you can enable or disable for your use case. We can also go to Safe Search and choose which sites we want to have the Safe Search result for. One thing to keep in mind is what this is technically doing. What DNS Watch is going to accomplish is redirect those users to the Safe Search variant of those websites. Those websites are then the ones responsible for the actual results that are presented. But this makes it so that way if someone was to go to one of these search engines and look for possibly illicit material, it should be a good first line of defense to prevent that material from actually showing. We're going to go ahead and save our changes. We can then go back to our content filtering policies. So now that we can see what our content filtering policies can do for us, how do we control what the client users actually see and which policy they will go through? Well, you do that through your client policy here. Previously, before August 20th, 2020, you could only have one policy for all DNS Watch Go users. Now you can actually pick and choose which users get which policy. We do that by going to DNS Watch Go Client Groups, and we can see the current groups I have here. You may only see one or you may see both, depending on if you had your DNS Watch Go account created before this change. The default group is where all newly registered clients will be placed automatically. So it's a good idea to have a base default policy that can represent that. The migrated from client policy is all of my previous users before this change occurred. If I want to move them to my default group, I can do that or I can create new groups for each individual use case. For example, maybe a sales team, an IT team, managers, etc. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new group. I'm going to go ahead and call it sales team. 
I can then choose which policy I want it to use, which I already have a sales team here. Then I can simply select group like so. Now to add users, I need to make sure that I have users available. Currently, all of my users are in my migrated client policy. So I'm going to manage my old group, select all of my users or whichever ones I want to, and then move to the sales team and move clients. I can then go back to groups and we can see those two active users are now in the sales team group. So there we are. We now have the protections of DNS Watch through our feeds and different filtered lists. We also have our content filtering policies so we can have granular control over different content that we may not wish to have on our network or our users to see. And we have the granular control of client policies so we can mix and match who gets to see what. So the key takeaways that we have is how to locate and download the DNS Watch Go client, what the API token is for and why you need it, as well as how you can use your client policies to protect your users. Thank you.